Mrs. T, question and suggested solution. This is video tutorial number three of three. In the first video tutorial, we discussed the question and our approach to it. In the second video tutorial, we completed the preparation of the income statement. And now in this video tutorial, we will complete the statement of financial position. The trial balance we've already discussed and each item in the trial balance was identified as where it will reappear. We wrote the letters FP to signify that the items will appear in the statement of financial position. And then we discussed the adjustments, and we noted that each adjustment we make will have to appear twice. Once in the income statement, which could be the trading account or the profit and loss account part of it, but then it will have to reappear in the statement of financial position. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to have a look at the statement of financial position. In the statement of financial position, we're going to start off with the non-current assets. Now the non-current assets are going to be presented in a table. And in that table, we're going to have the original cost of the asset, the depreciation to date, which is up to and including the last day of this current financial year, and then that will give us the net book value. We will then list the non-current assets down here. And if we just go and look at the trial balance, we can see that these items here, one, two, three, four, five, those five, five items are the non-current assets and these amounts of money here represent the cost. So they're the items we're going to put in. So we have real land, buildings, equipment, fixtures and fittings, and the motor vehicles. Now we're going to put in the cost, the depreciation, and the net book value. If we just go back and look at the adjustments here, we can see in the notes, freehold land and buildings are not depreciated, so the depreciation on those two non current assets will be nil. So if I go back here, and I'll just get rid of these circles, I'll pop in the freehold land, original cost 20,000, the depreciation is nil, so the net book value is the same as the original cost. Likewise with the buildings, Usual cost 35,000, depreciation is nil, I beg your pardon, 33,000, the depreciation is nil, so the net book value is 33,000. Now we'll do the equipment. So if I go back and I pick out the cost of the equipment, I can see the cost of the equipment is 64,000. So I'm going to put that figure in here. Now what I need is the depreciation to date. Now, I'm just going to write a few notes here, but do remember, you're going to need this space later on, so you might want to just write this somewhere else. But the figure that goes in here, the depreciation to date, I'm going to find it in two places. I'm going to find part of the figure I, information I need in the trial balance, and the other part in the income statement. So going to the trial balance first, I can see here I have, under provision for depreciation, I have the equipment, 21,000. 21,000 represents the depreciation or the wear and tear or the fallen value of the equipment from the day it was bought up to the beginning of this year. So that's the figure I need to start with. So I'm going to put that in there. That's 21,000. Now what I need is the depreciation for this current year. And the depreciation for this current year I'll find in the income statement. So if I go to the income statement, which we would have prepared in video tutorial number two, and I have a look at that there. I can see depreciation, the equipment, 6,400. So that represents the depreciation for this current year. So I add that on, the 6,400, to the depreciation going forward. So I have the depreciation from the day the asset was bought up to the beginning of this year, plus the depreciation for this year, gives me a total of 27,400. So if I put that figure in there, 27,400. So what I now have is the equipment at its original cost, 64,000. I'm going to take away from that the total depreciation from the day the equipment was bought up to the end of this current year, that's 27,400, and that will give me a net book value of 36,600. Now, that's the way 
the depreciation is always calculated. You get the cost figure from the trial balance. The accumulated depreciation figure you get, you have to work it out. You get part of the figure from the trial balance and you get the remaining part of it from the income statement. You add them together and take this new increased figure away. So it's cost minus depreciation equals the net book value. Now what I'm going to do is I am just going to get rid of all my markings here and write in that figure. So that's what we have. Now I'm going to do the fixtures and fittings. It's the same process as before. So the first thing I need is I need the original cost figure. So if I go to my trial balance and my fixture and fitting to cost come to 15,000. So I'll put that figure in there. The accumulated depreciation, I need to go to two different places to find the total figure I need. So I go to my trial balance and I see for my fixtures and fittings, the figure is 4,000. That goes in there. Remember, that is the depreciation from the day the asset was bought up to the beginning of this current year. And now I go to my income statement and I have 750 being the depreciation for this current year. So I'll add that on. That gives me 4,750, which is the depreciation on the asset from the day it was bought up to the end of the current year, which means the value of the asset at the end of this current year is its original cost of 15,000 minus 4,750 depreciation to date equals to 10,250. Now what I'll do is I'll just tidy that up a little bit. Get rid of that there and write that in. Okay, and then finally we have the motor vehicles. Same approach, so I'll just jot in the figures here. We have motor vehicles that cost 18,000. So I'll put that in there. And then for here, I'll just write the numbers in here. So it'll be trial balance and income statements is where I'm going to. So the trial balance first. I have under the provision for depreciation, motor vehicles 7,000. So I'll put that in there. Plus, back to the income statement, we have the depreciation of the motor vehicles is 3,600. So, 3,600 there. So if I add those together, that gives me 10,600. That's the number I'm going to pop in here. 10,600. So now what I have is I have the original cost of 18,000 minus 10,600 being the depreciation from the day the asset was bought up to the end of the current year which gives me a net book value of 7,400. And likewise, I'll just tidy that up, up a little bit and pop in the numbers. Okay, so at this stage we've completed all the non-current assets, so we just need to finish off the table. And to finish off the table, I'm just going to add up and get the total for each one of these columns. So if I pop those totals in, we can see the total cost, 150,000. Total depreciation, 42,750. And the net book value, 107,250. Now the net book value of the non-current assets, that's the figure we really need. And we're going to continue with that. You know that these numbers here are underlined, so we're finished with them. So, in the statement of financial position, we're going to have, first of all, total assets. That is the non-current assets, which we've just worked out now. That's that figure there, the net book value. And we now need the current assets. So I'm going to list my current assets. My current assets will be the inventory, the accounts receivable, people who owe us money. Except remember, we have an adjustment on that. We have the provision for bad debts, which will be taken away. We have the prepayments, which is the prepayment on the insurance, and we have the money in the bank. 
Now the inventory figure is the figure uh, from the notes. In other words, it's the inventory at the 31st of March. So I pop that in. 38,000. The accounts receivable is the figure from the trial balance. And we can see it's there, 30,500. But remember, we have an existing provision of 1,000. And we have increased the provision up to 2,000. So provision for bad debts or provision for doubtful debts are taken away from the accounts receivable. So back here, so back here we'll have the accounts receivable of 30,500 less the provision for bad debts, which means we have an accounts receivable figure here of 28,500. We have the prepayments of 2,000 and we have 4,000 in the money in the bank. So I'm going to add up these current assets, bring them out here, line them up underneath the net book value of my non-current assets here. And when I add these together, the net book value of my non-current assets plus the current assets, I get my total asset figure of 179,750. So now I have my total asset figure, 179,750. And as we know, total assets must equal to capital plus liabilities. So the final part of the statement of financial position is to list the capital and the liabilities. So just moving on to the top of the next page, I'm going to start off with the capital and liabilities. Now we need to do a little capital account. We start off with the capital at the start of the year. So if I just go back to my trial balance, I can see that's that figure there, 100,000. So I can pop that in. And then I'm going to add onto that the net profit and take away from the drawings. And that'll give me my balance at the end of the year. So as I already mentioned, the capital start of the year is 100,000. Now the net profit belongs to the owner. So if we go back to the income statement, we can get the net profit figure there of 49,750, which we will add on bring the total capital figure up to 149,750 149, before we take away the drawings. And then just back to the trial balance, we see the drawings figure, 8,500. So I'm going to take that away because that represents money that the owner has actually taken out of the business. So that leaves the balance at the end of the year on the capital account of 141,250. So that is the capital and now we have the liabilities. So there are two types of liabilities. There's the non-current liabilities, which would represent long-term loans, and there's the current liabilities. Now you'll always have the accounts payable, and then you'll have, and you'll also have any other current liabilities, such as the accruals. So just, that'll give us then our total capital and liabilities. So just popping those numbers in, there are no long-term liabilities, so I just put in nil. The reason I'm just simply showing this here is that quite a lot of questions, there are long-term loans, i.e. non-current liabilities, so they would be inserted here. Under the current liabilities, we have, well, let's go back and have a look, we have the accounts payable, 33500 so I'll pop that in there, and we have the expenses accrued, so we go back here, we can see the accrual is the 3,500 wage and salaries and 1,500 for the light and heat. So if I just add those in there, 5,000. So that's 5,000 there, that's made up of the light and heat and the wage and salaries. So I'm going to add those together and then bring them out and line them up here. So out here I now have my capital plus all my liabilities, give me a total of 179,750. 179,750 is the total of capital and liabilities, which of course is the same as total assets. Thank you.